Harold T. Holden, the artist. They call him H, and we'll find out why on this edition of City Connections. Standards, right education system. I'm the former Frank Key. Of the Northwest Pass, you really need somebody different. Your career, you're used to winning a lot. It was everything to us. Seven or eight weeks of two days. They really made me appreciate we're allowed to win. And he's coming in and we'll be shooting the whole time. Let's go back real quick to the, the Enid Walker thing. And of course, we have training in confined space. Legitimate lady, you know, a little more. I could say tip on that, Steve. Put the hat on and get out there and do the job. Television model that you watch growing up. Houston, this is the International Space Station. City Connections begins right now. Harold T. Holden, or H as he's called by most folks, was born in Enid, Oklahoma. He comes from a family of creative and talented inventors. In 1915, his great-grandfather, George Failing, invented the bottle capping machine that is still used on beverages today. His grandfather, oil pioneer George E. Failing, invented the first portable drilling rig. H. graduated from Enid High School in 1958. After graduating from Enid High School, H. attended Oklahoma State University, but a trip to Houston to work on an oil rig in 1959 resulted in a chance meeting with an instructor at the Texas Academy of Art, from which H. graduated with a degree. H. is completely self-taught as a sculptor. Harold Holden has had an interest in horses his entire life. After a tour of duty with the Navy during Vietnam, H. ventured out on his own in 1973 to try to make it as a professional fine artist. Believing that an artist should know his subject matter, he spends much of his leisure time staying close to the cowboy way of life. In 1987, H. was chosen to sculpt a series of commemorative bronzes to depict the 165-year history of the Cherokee Strip in Oklahoma and Kansas. That same year, he completed his first of many monuments, Boomer, for the city of Enid, Oklahoma. Since that first monument 30 years ago, H. has completed 21 additional monuments for placement in Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, and Arkansas. Among them, Oklahoma's native son at Will Rogers World Airport. We will remember at Oklahoma State University. Monarch at rest at the Oklahoma History Center. And his larger than life monument of E.K. Gaylord graces the entrance of the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in Oklahoma City. In 2007, H was diagnosed with a fatal lung disease for which there is no known cause or cure. Prayers were answered when in July 2010, he received a life-saving single lung transplant at Integris Hospital in Oklahoma City. In gratitude for his second chance at life, a casting of his six-foot monument, Thank You, Lord, graces the garden at Emmanuel Baptist Church in Enid, Oklahoma. H received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Oklahoma Sculpture Society in 2000. In 2001, he was awarded the Governor's Art Award from Oklahoma Governor Frank Keating. In 2005, he was honored with a Distinguished Alumni Award from Oklahoma State University. In 2014, he was inducted into the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, the highest honor the state can bestow on one of its citizens. In April 2017, H became the first Oklahoma artist to be inducted into the Hall of Great Westerners at the National Cowboy Museum in Oklahoma City. H and his wife, Edna May, live near Kremlin, Oklahoma. Welcome to City Connections. We move from the studio to the Holden Gallery right now. And my special guest, Harold T. H. Holden. Mr. Holden, yes, sir. good to see you. Thank you for allowing us to come to your, your gallery today. I took, I've taken a look at your bio, and it, it is very extensive. You have a long list of achievements. But question number one, we'll get to the achievements later. Question number one, tell us a story about, they just call you H. It's not Harold and whatever, but it's H. Yeah, that uh, was given to me as a... Uh, I was named after my uncle, Harold. Okay. 
but they called him H. And so when I was born, they just called me Little H. And then uh, after I grew up, it's just H. And you'll answer to most anything, but usually it is H. Yeah, you can get close to that. Well, thank you for allowing us to be in your gallery today. I've got a copy of the Oklahoma Magazine of the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. And uh, we'll, we'll make sure that everybody can see a good copy of this. Very impressive. There's a great story in here about Hall of Famers, uh, yourself, and also Mike Larson. So you have garnered one of Oklahoma's highest honors into the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. Does that recognition mean anything to you? I mean, it, it's got to be special. Well, yeah. So. I mean, it's the highest honor. So how, how do you feel when you see that? It was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, it's, it's really something they put on a good deal down there. And since they've put the Hall of Fame where the museum is, why, well, I think it's going to do a lot better. Had this show put up, uh, we kind of got together and put, had the show put up there. Hopefully, get a lot more people sure. to come in there. Sure. Well, I, I was born and raised in Perry, Oklahoma, and I remember my mom would say, you know, you're, she would talk about a particular individual and say, boy, they're in really high cotton or tall cotton. She would use that phrase, and, and her phrase simply meant those were a really impressive list of people. So in the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, that's an impressive list of people. And so you've got to be honored as an Oklahoman to be, you know, included in that group. Yeah, I'm lucky. You're lucky. Very good. Well, you graduated uh, from Enid High School, I think, in 1958, if I read your bio correctly. Yes. And uh, you uh, ran in a relay, 880 relay. I ran in the half mile in high school way back. And I noticed that uh, you had a uh, lightweight boxing championship. That was, uh, in a, that was at uh, the another school? Naval Academy up okay. in Indiana. Okay. So sports was a part of your upbringing, if you will, uh, because you played football, and of course if you ran track and then with the boxing. Um, why the interest in sports at that young age? I don't know, you just got a lot more energy. Yeah. <laughs> and it was something probably everybody was doing, right? Well, the boxing came from my brother. He, older brother, he was an amateur boxer. So he beat me up a lot, so I, <laughs> so you had to learn how to yeah. defend yourself? Is that, that it? <laughs> what do they call that, the school of hard knocks? Is that yes. What, is that what that is? So, I understand. We'll, we'll move it several years forward. In 2010, you had kind of a life-changing event that took place in your life, and you received a lung transplant. And along with that, you created a monument that's entitled Thank You, Lord. And I believe the Thank You, Lord monument, you have one at, uh, here in Enid at Emmanuel Baptist Church, mm -hmm. and then also one down at the uh, hospital in Tegris in Oklahoma City. Tell us about Thank You, Lord. Well, I was, I was in the process of doing that and another big piece in, the, my, in my studio, but Wade Bertelson, I yes. think. Yes, thank yeah. you. He, he was on, he wanted that piece done for the church. Okay. That's, he'd come out, uh, quite a bit and pray with me and pray to, for me to make it through the operation so I could finish that, that piece. And then when we unveiled it out there, Ed and Maggie said, we'd like an extension on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and so, the one, yeah, the one down at the uh, transplant center, I cast another one for them. It's outside the emergency is. Right. Straight around there. Right. When you name a piece, for example, Thank You, Lord, what type of thought or what, what is the process? You, you introduced me a while ago to a place uh, or to a, a piece that you had, um, weather permitting, I think it was. Now you have Thank You, Lord. What's, can you talk us through the process of how you name your pieces? Well, the, yeah, uh, some guys that give me ideas, you know, and, I, and that's probably one of the hardest things to get the good title. But thank you, Lord, was mainly for ranchers. He's uh, thanking for the rain. He has a slicker sure. on. And, sure. Uh, and 
And certainly the theme of thank you, Lord, is out of appreciation. Appreciation for another chance at life, if you will, but also appreciation for that rain that, that comes that way. Yes. And I guess you only have a certain amount of space on your pieces, so it can't be a long title. You have to keep it to a small amount. Let me ask you this, H. Have you always wanted to be an artist? I mean, that's what you were born to do, right? Yeah, I think so, because I... I drew a lot when I was uh, real little. I drew and I made little clay uh, figures and stuff. But it just, I hope to be a cowboy artist uh, early, you know. The, there wasn't any, but not many of them making a living at it, but uh, that's what I kind of grew up. My dad was a horseman. And, and uh, I just like the Western. Sure. sure. Yeah. It's gotten big and, you know, since when I started doing it in 1972 is when I moved back from, I think it was 72, that I moved back to here from Houston. Couldn't take it any longer. Good. Came back to Oklahoma. My special guest today on City Connections is Harold T. H. Holden, and we're at the gallery in downtown Enid. I think it's 128 North Independence, but it's uh, on the corner. It's very familiar, and we're at the gallery talking with H. today. Um, I guess people are familiar with your sculpture work, but you also have a painting, especially the one that's right behind you. Tell us about your painting efforts. Well, I was a painter before I okay. sculpt, and then I started doing uh, sculpture a year, you know, and I was painting the rest of the time. Then it gradually got, or doing more and more, and then I got Boomer, this piece, mm -hmm. and uh, that kind of led into other monuments. About H, I read in your bio that you're a self-taught sculptor, right? Right. How in the world did you do that? Is that a process of elimination? I mean, no, I don't. I don't know. You know, the artists in the old days they would uh, sculpt the piece, and that would be their model to draw from. Okay. But yeah, I was. Uh, it was easier for me to sculpt. And uh, painting's hard. It just is, especially when you spend, you know, six months or so on a monument and then you come back I can't remember how to paint. <laughs> <laughs> well I think most of us look at uh, the pieces that we have here on the table and also the, the Boomer piece that's located over at Convention Hall. We look at that and we just marvel at the talent to do something like that because most of us may we might paint with colors or something like that. We, we're just in awe of the talent that they have. I remember growing up in Perry I'd have my big chief tablet and I do kind of so, so-called drawings, if you will. The drawing for you started way back in the early days, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you, were, you were in grade school or early school, yeah. and uh, you just had an interest way back then. It didn't start any later. What, what were the things that you would draw? If you go back to the grade school days, if you will, and if you're just drawing characters, what would it be? Horses, okay. cowboys, Indians, and... Uh, those were considered original drawings from uh, Harold Grondike. He, the uh, books I did all these drawings in, why Johnny got those going through the school. I see. And they just kept on. And I was asking Harold about when you're going to buy a piece of art, and he said, oh, I got <laughs> books full of your art, you know. <laughs> I have a list, uh, when I read your bio, of H's monuments here in Enid, and the list, and we'll see if this is an entire list. We have Boomer, we have Holding the Claim, Vision Seeker, Keeper of the Plains, The Ranger, The Homesteaders, Pioneers, Past, Present, and Future, And of course, thank you, Lord, the one that we talked about. Um, 
that's a long list right there, and you, and you have pieces in Texas and I think Arkansas, Kansas, Oklahoma, airports, at universities, hospitals. Do you have a favorite piece, H? Probably a, a boomer would be because it was my first, first piece. And I probably spent more time on it than I should have, but I was just learning. How to, I learned on this piece sure. here. I, learn. I think most people, when they see Boomer look, you know, located on Independence there by Convention Hall, again, they're just so impressed and in awe of the detail and the artwork. Why, why Boomer? Why is it the guy on the horse just galloping? Why was it that piece to be your first piece? Well, it was the, for the centennial, I think. Okay. Uh, the bank, uh, NBC Bank, they, they had the copyright on it. They put up the money and uh, they have a half life size out of their place. And that takes us back to, I think, 1987 when all this took place. So it's amazing how fast time flies, right? <laughs> it's hard to imagine. Unbelievable. Yeah. And tell us about the, the piece that you have at Will Rogers Airport. When people fly into Oklahoma City, another one of your favorite pieces, mm -hmm. um, Will Rogers, correct? Sure. So tell us about that one, if you would, please. Well, I spent a lot of time over at the Claremore at the museum, mm -hmm. uh, photographing or sketching. I wanted it to be uh, authentic, everything, the saddle, the the particular horse he was riding was uh, called Teddy, and most of the uh, things you see of, with uh, Will Rogers is soap suds, that other horse he had, but this is the one he used on stage, you know, and did all his tricks. And uh, so I, uh, that's the main thing I wanted to be authentic. And I think one of the well-kept secrets in Oklahoma is um, the Will Rogers Museum in Claremore. Yeah. I've had the opportunity to be there two or three times, and it's just very impressive. So if you're ever in northeastern Oklahoma, take time to go to the Will Rogers Museum. Uh, my next question, H, is do you consider yourself cowboy? I mean, you, you look at the, your artwork, you already told us that your, your interest was in horses and Indians and, of course, cowboys. So you're a cowboy at heart. So undoubtedly, that just really influences uh, the work that you do. What other influences were out there that really encouraged you to do those pieces that we just mentioned? Was it, was it your upbringing? Was it Oklahoma? Was it just the... Yeah, I was always... Uh, always around horses, Remington I guess. Remington and Russell, you know, he grew up on those yeah. guys. And, and Will James, I got most of his books. And, uh, that's put you in the mood to be a cowboy. To, sure, sure. But I don't uh, make a living out as a cowboy or never did. <laughs> I may maybe a uh, day work once in a while, yeah. you know. But yeah, I, I had to go this direction, and I like the cowboy. But that, you know, they don't pay those cowboys that much. Well, we're at the Holden Gallery at 128 uh, North Independence here in downtown Enid. And speaking of um, direction and, and success and achievement, uh, there's a, H, there's a slogan that I see from time to time says, the harder I work, the luckier I get. And uh, overnight success took 20 years to get or something like that. But what do you contribute your success to? You look at the gallery, you look at the pieces all across four states and more. What's the contributing factor to you being so successful? Uh, my wife. Good answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true, though. Yeah. Yeah. She. All I had to do was create something. So, Ed and Amaze, key ingredient to your success. Anything else? Uh. Well. I can't think of any. Keys, hard work, just like you said. Yeah, the luckier you get, or, or, the, or the harder I work, the luckier I get. Yeah, I like that. All right. Well, thank you for joining us on City Connections today. Our special guest is Harold T. H. Holden. And we're at the gallery in downtown Indian, Oklahoma. 
We'll have more with H and talk a little bit more about his achievements and some of his other pieces. And we'll do that right after this. Welcome back to City Connections. Thank you for spending time with us today. Uh, one of my uh, privileges and honors that I have is to visit with all types of individuals that uh, have made a difference in this country and also in the state of Oklahoma and right here in Enid, Oklahoma. My special guests, all too familiar, Harold T. H. Holden. H., we've talked a little bit about uh, the, the early days of you started drawing and, and all your sculpture work. There's a familiar piece at Oklahoma State University and uh, there's a, a tr very tragic story associated with this, but also I understand there was kind of a, a loss within your family as well around that time. And the piece that I'm referring to is We w Will Remember, and that deals with the, the basketball players and I believe the sportscaster um, that was lost in that plane crash at Oklahoma State. But also there's a connection with your first grandson. Tell us about We Will Remember. Uh, well, uh, friends of ours, uh, the Flemings, they're the one that wanted me to do that piece because their son got, and uh, was it Nate? Was it Nate? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I kind of took that as my grand grandson, first grandson. He he only lived four days, and. I can remember before when my, my daughter had called and told me what was going to happen, I just dropped to my knees. So I kind of used, funneled that, my grief into that piece. And uh, that's mainly how I looked at it. And if I recall, We Will Remember is in the lobby of Gallagher Iva Arena, if I remember where, where it's mm -hmm. placed. And I appreciate you sharing that. It's a delicate topic, but it, it reminds us that when we see a piece of work like Boomer or Two's Company, when, when we see these, there's, there's, there's a story behind it. There's, there's uh, emotion behind it, if you will. Mm -hmm. And even though it's an art piece, there's, there's usually another story behind it. So thank you for sharing that. Sure. Well, in 2017, you were the first artist inducted into the Hall of Great Westerners at the National Cowboy Museum in Oklahoma City. I remember reading about it and seeing all types of photos. The Hall of the Great Westerners. That's a very impressive title to me. So what does that recognition mean to you? I can't imagine why they <laughs> gave me that. It's, uh, they went down the list and they go, oh, well, okay, there's H. Well, yeah. we'll just pick H. <laughs> yeah. Because I just, you know, I never even thought about getting that award. And I did the, the award, sculpted the award. <laughs> I could have thought of an easier way to get one of my sculptures. When you see your work at, um, do you, let me ask you this. Do you, when you see pieces like this, do you consider that your work? Or what, how do you identify that age? Even your life-size pieces, like Will Rogers at the National Cowboy Hall of Fame. Um, well, it's something like just creations or, okay. but like the big pieces, they are hard work. It's some skill, but it's just hard work. Yeah. I didn't know if an artist that you say, well, this creation here, or whatever term that you're using. I'm trying to learn as we go along here because yeah. I just can appreciate uh, the, the talent to do this. I think they use the word piece more than anything. This piece here. Yeah, that piece there. Okay, very good. Well, again, you work in several states, work at hospitals, at universities. Uh, I think you have a piece over in Alba, is that correct? At the school yeah. in Alba? I know at different educational academic institutions that you have different pieces. Um, when you see your work, like if you fly into Oklahoma City and you see the Will Rogers piece, what, what does that mean to you? It means uh, they need to move it into <laughs> side where some pe pe people go see it. That was uh, We'll make sure they get that message. 
That's what the mayor said. Yeah. We got to move that somewhere people can see it. <laughs> All the trees and everything grown up yeah. around there. And, uh, well, we'll send them a copy of this and just reinforce that <laughs> message that they, they okay. need to meet that. So again, like the We Will Remember piece in the lobby over at Gala Eye, but when you, when you see those, those pieces, um, I'm sure it takes you back to all the energy, the effort, and the discipline. What else? When you, there's got to be some gratification knowing that it's completed. Right. I, all the pieces I do, I'm waiting to see what it will look like in the bronze because that's what I'm, uh, that's what I'm doing is the bronze. But you look at it in the clay, it's kind of dead, you know. Mm -hmm. But when you have it cast to it and uh, you can comes to life you know i'm sure each piece and we'll use that word each piece that you that you do takes a different amount of weeks month and the, the times are different but if you would just kind of walk us through the the process for this this is two's company uh from the idea to the finished product can you kind of just for us novice individuals who can barely spell art or sculpture okay <laughs> Walk us through the process so let people know the, the effort to do this. Are well, you penciling this out to begin with? I used to, but now most of the time I do little little models called pinch models. But I do them pretty, pretty well, where a lot of pinch models just, but I make them kind of good, you know, just because I'm going to use it to look at when I do the bigger piece like this, that's it. I did a little teeny one. And most of, uh, most of them I do that way. You can, if you do a, a pinch model, you can see what it looks like in the round, where you, you, you don't uh, know that when you come in, but I've already seen it, you know, little. Right. And I guess then you, then you send this off to the foundry, is that the right? Is, is there's that additional step? Oh yeah, you got to make a mold. Uh, they make the molds that there's several different people that I use, but uh, and the the mold is the clay. You lose the clay because sure. you uh, uh, when they make the mold, it's a uh, rubber painted on rubber and then there's a plaster, what they call mother mold over it. Work the wax, put the, all the gates, air gates on it, and, and then you dip it in a slurry, a ceramic slurry, and it builds up a, a ceramic shell around the whole piece. Yeah. And then that's when you heat it and the wax comes out and then you pour the molten bronze in that and then start when it cools, you start breaking it off, and you got the bronze, and then you, then you start uh, uh, all the chasing work, you know, with tools and cutting the pieces off of the welding. You know, those big ones are done in quite a few pieces. And they're all welded together, and you can't tell where the yeah. welds are. I guess there's some excitement, or maybe some anticipation when you see a large piece that's being moved into its final resting place that you get your fingers crossed? Do you ever stand there thinking, hope they don't drop it? <laughs> yeah, there was one instance that, that Will Rogers, they lowered it down on a crane from the top floor, you know, this down, and they swung it around, you know, and, it, and, and he used these little uh, straps. You know, I see big, bigger straps on smaller pieces. Sure. I saw that. Oh, I said, oh, God. You know, thought he'd drop it. <laughs> but it held. Yeah. How about that? Well, we're at the end of our interview, uh, H, and I want to give you an opportunity. This will air for, you know, several weeks. And again, it'll, it, the show or the interview and your, your comments will go around the globe, if you will. So an individual, young or old, that is watching this interview, and they're, let's say they're young at being an artist, a painter or a sculptor. What advice or words of wisdom would you share with them as they're watching this and they're thinking, I want to do that, how would you help them along? What would you say? Oh, I'd say uh, go to workshops. 
professional sculptors that are real good. They'll have a workshop and you can go uh, to those workshops and learn a lot more than uh, even with the painting. You learn a lot more in the uh, workshops because you learn from some of the best in the country world. And it's, you know, that's what I would advise any young guy. It's, uh, although I know uh, OU down there has a good sculptor in residence, Paul Moore. Okay. He could learn. If he goes after teaching at why he's, and I think he does, you know, he does have a, uh, but he's the, he does it for the university there, not the students. Well, that's great advice because I've heard that before that when you want to get from point A to point B, find out who has been to point B, mm -hmm. hang around them and ask all the questions and not that you're going to learn the shortcut, but at least you're going to learn what it takes to get to that next stop. So. Yeah. My son, uh, who's a great painter, uh, he went to I don't know how many workshops with some of the people I show with that are Frida West winners and, you know, the best painters there is. And the guy that makes half a million uh, teaching you, you know, he's got to do something right you can learn from him. But. Speaking of half million, there's, there's a painting behind us. Edna Mays in that painting. That's a half million dollar piece oh, sure. right there, isn't it? Sure. sure. At least? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, uh, you just glance at it, just tremendous amount of detail. It's a very impressive picture. H, thank you for allowing us to be at your gallery today. I know you're a busy guy and you've had a lot of attention, a lot of interviews and a lot of, uh, uh, I guess, interruptions. Is there anything that you're working on that you can tell us about? Is there anything special for some, some school or yeah. is there a piece? Yeah. Um, uh, Maybe you can't say. Well, I think I can say one is, okay. uh, is Pistol Pete. Okay. I'm going to do him and... Uh, uh, I don't know where it's, he, he's on a horse, uh, whether it's going to be life or life in a quarter, I'm not sure yet, but uh, I think there's not enough money's raised for the okay. life, so okay. we get, I'll do one or the other. So you heard it right here on City Connections, you know, on any television network, Pistol Pete is in the, uh, the, the workings, if you will. The real, the real guy. The real guy. Yeah. I understand. I understand. <laughs> Not the other one, but the real deal. I understand. Again, Harold, Mr. Holden, thank you very much for your time today. It's, it's a real honor and treat for us to be here to visit with you. Um, thank you for uh, sharing, uh, uh, what, Two's company with us and, of course, Boomer. And if you want to see the big Boomer, and anytime you come to Enid, Oklahoma, come to Convention Hall on North Independence, and you will see a larger-than-life guy that's on a horse, and he is, he's in a hurry. That's all I can say. He is really galloping. So, again, thank you for your time today. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. It's our pleasure. And thank you for joining us on City Connections today. Again, I believe the gallery is open by appointment here in downtown Enid, so you want to give the Holden uh, Gallery a uh, phone call and uh, we can put that number on the screen for you and give them a call and come down and see all the, just the gorgeous paintings and also the, the pieces of work that here at the Holden Studio. Uh, I'm Steve Kime for City Connections. Until next time, make it a great day.